into details because it might just be confusing. In a nutshell, there is Chassidus asked the question, how could we say Adam Kadmein, the two words, Adam means a person, Kadmein means the Almighty as, as he is before the whole creation. How did these two words go together? If it's a person, it's a creation. If it's Kadmein, he's before everything. The answer is, in a very simple way, that this is, this is the thought about a person and about the chain of creation that appeared to Kadmein, to the Almighty. So this is the blueprints, and this is the thought which reviews, which, is, which overviews everything that takes place later. As Hasidus explains, even when the leaf turns over and the wind comes and it turns it to the right or to the left or to north or to the south, all this is registered in the blueprints of Adam Kadmin, which is basically this world. It's, it's called Machshava Hagduma, the early thought of reviewing and um, monitoring everything that's taking place in the world in good type place. So when we say Bethkhila Kasha'alam Machshava, the beginning when it went up to create the world, is that in our itself or is that not in Kadma? Is that the infinite light that what, I mean, because how could you say it went up in this thought to create? Or in this Sa'ava, you the desire, or Olam Chasid Yabana, whichever phrase you use for, for the motivation for God to create, when did that arouse itself? In or in Sof, Shalafneat Simpson, or in Adam Kadma, when there's already a Shaykhus, there's some connection, there's the envisioning of the universe, so to speak. In general, based on the Zaya that you quoted early, earlier, uh, Harman of the Maltok, Lif Glifu, that he had a will to desire, I mean, everything started right in the beginning. This brought about the Tzimtzum and everything that came after that. It is only that he is relating to world and overviewing everything. So that's basically Ak, which are the blueprints of world. But as Hasidus explains, the will to create, for example, Hasidus brings a very interesting example. A person who has a desire to have a house, why does a person have that desire? Because the Talmud says, and a person feels it instinctively, without a house, they're not a person. I'm not talking about owning a house. A house, the person should have a house where to be, a roof over the head. So Chassidah brings from the Talmud, and there's different versions, Kol Adam She'en Le Karka, Eni Adam. A person doesn't have land, not a person. A person doesn't have a house, there's two versions, is not a person. So therefore, when the Almighty wanted a dwelling place in the world, it is basically a desire, a very deep-rooted desire, the same way that we understand in regards to us. And it's hard to understand in regards to the Almighty because what is he missing? On the other hand, together with that, he wants us to do service to him. He wants us to, to fulfill his commandments. And as the Shalom asks the question, what is he lacking that he needs us to do? But this is how he himself limited himself to a certain extent that he should appreciate what we're doing. So this is considered a symptom also, a restriction. By giving us the mitzvahs and reacting to our mitzvahs as the Abish is pleased when we fulfill the commandments, this is already a restriction for him. But this is what he chose. We have, um, thank you Rabbi Selvsky, we have in, in the sphere, in the Olamos, we have this idea, if you, uh, if you're paying attention when you're studying, uh, I have allergies, I'm sorry, I just feel like I'm going to sneeze, but I, I'll try not to hit you. Um, <laughs> him, shield, yeah. the Iron Dome. I don't know if Israel could defend itself against me when I sneeze and stuff flies, but chas uh, v'shalom. But David Shwaki uh -oh. will, because he'll give me a tissue. So we have in uh, the story of Jacob, when he marries Rachel and Leah, Bila and Zilpa, he has a father-in-law hard to do business with. So they start negotiating about which sheep of the flock will be his. So there's, there's terminology there that describe the speckled and spotted and splayed sheep. The, the, the words that the Kabbalah takes out of those terms are akudim, akudim, and berudim. Three terms for, I'm not going to get, I'm not going to make it, I know it's late, I'm not going to make you get, explain each one of these until so everybody gets a hundred on the test. But you have these olamos, these, again, 
And I want to say something that I find interesting. Why do we need all these worlds? What do we need to know all this stuff for? To say there's God. Why don't you just read Bereshus Bar? Like go back to Cheda, go back to school. Read the story of Genesis. God created the world. What do you need to know about the world of Berudim, the world of Akudim, the world of Nikudim? What do you need to know these things? The Kav, the, the, the ray of light, the Rashima, the residue, the Adam Kadma. What do you need to know all these things? Does anybody know? <coughs> Well, the, the, well, it's not just that it's good. These are all seen as meditations, techniques to take you back into God consciousness in a way where you're still whole. Be, in other words, you can, you can still be a fully mature human being, be in this world, and... The reason why there's this idea of studying the spiritual worlds and the order in them is the idea of getting back to your source. I Menachem mean, um said, you know, on a scientific level, scientists are saying they're discovering everything, not everything, but so much about the world's history. Yet at the same time, this is the, genera- the atomic age, where the nuclear age, where we think we've figured it all out, or much of what has to be figured out, and yet we're so close to the verge, God forbid. This is the, this knowledge, the purpose of this knowledge, is to reacquaint ourselves with the mystery of the oneness of God. We're complex, so some of us need it to be complicated. The Ari and, and Chabad Hasidus is a is a complex system. It's not a it, it's one that uses requires the, the imagination and the mind and ultimately the heart. Interestingly enough, one of the things that Chabad Hasidus asks of its followers is that the head convert the heart, so to speak, transform the heart from a hard heart, from a selfish heart, to a soft heart, to a caring heart, to a divine heart. Open your heart. An open heart. That's the goal of much of the study. So we're, we're coming up to Lagba Omer. So rather than, we'll leave the particular Olamos, which are fascinating uh, for now. And we're, we're going to talk a little bit about Lagba.